Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of CS Mentor. Very recently, the ACM Global Technical Policy Council has published a tech brief on the risks of generative artificial intelligence. For those of you that don't know, the ACM is one of the largest societies in computer science. In this brief, ACM describes what are the risks for individual, for society and for the environment of generative AI solutions such as, for example, ChatGPT, that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. So in this video, I want to summarize this document, provide you my personal opinion, and as well, I would love to hear from you about your opinions down in the comment. Before we begin, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel so that this content can reach a wider audience. So thank you, and let's start. First of all, let's try to understand what is generative AI. So this is a set of computing resources mostly based on neural networks. So neural network is an artificial intelligence model which tries to mimic the way in which our brain works. So it is formed by what we call neurons, and these neurons are generally organized in layers which are interconnected with each other and can exchange signals depending on the signal that they receive. Additionally, these neural networks models are trained using large amount of data over very powerful computational resources, such as, for example, very powerful data centers. By using these models, generative AI is able to create content. This content could be text or code, such as, for example, what happens with ChatGPT, but it could also be an image, it could also be an audio or a video. So, for example, I went over a tool online and I asked to create a picture of President Biden and President Trump that eat a pizza together, and this is what I got. Obviously, this never happened, but you can tell that the image is relatively realistic. And this was just a simple free model. So more powerful model can create pictures which look more and more like reality. A similar problem also happens with tools that generate text, such as, for example, ChatGPT. So these tools generate text based on the statistical patterns that have been observed in the data used for training. But there is not really understanding by ChatGPT of the meaning of the text that is generated, there is no understanding of what is the human perception of the text that is generated, etc. So these tools can actually hallucinate, meaning that they can create content that is very plausible, is very realistic, but is incorrect and is not real. So for example, I made a video about using ChatGPT for scientific writing and for specifically on writing a red work section and ChatGPT invented some papers that never existed before. And you can find the link to this video up there if you are interested. So as a result, ChatGPT and similar tools can create content that is unwise, unjust, and also unsafe. Another issue is that these models are so complex that it's very, very hard to understand why they generated a certain output given a certain input. And this is what we usually call the black box approach. So these models are so complex, so large, so intricate that they look like a giant black box that given an input, outputs an output, but nobody knows exactly what goes on inside. And so this clearly could be an issue when these tools are used in a specific context in which, for example, a level of accountability is required. You can imagine if they're used in a law context or, for example, in medicine to write prescriptions or to write some diagnosis based on some test results that you got. So obviously no technology is perfect. And so why should we even worry about it? Definitely will be more research being done and these tools will be improved. Well, something that is happening these days is an exponential grow of generative AI technologies, a grow that is a little bit out of control. So just to give you some numbers, currently the market for generative AI is about $8 billion. For example, for Twitter, it took 65 months in order to reach 100 million users. And for ChatGPT, it took just two months. So this exponential grow poses risks in terms of the individual that use it, in terms of the society, and also in terms of the environment. So the risks for individuals arise from the fact that people are going to interact with these applications, and these people could be even minors, and they're going to be exposed to content that could be discriminatory, it could be biased, it could be incorrect or false if the to hallucinates, etc. They could even generate hate speech, for example. And all this is due to the fact that there is no real uh, sanity control on the data that is used in order to train these models. Additionally, many people, especially those that do not have a technical background, may believe that they are interacting with a sentient being. And so this could create potential manipulation, can create a problem with trust, it can create also fraud, etc. 
At the societal level, the risks arise from the fact that these tools could be used to generate disinformation, propaganda, misleading content in general. And this could impact the informational ecosystem, the educational ecosystem, and also potentially the functionality of our democratic society. I can give you a small example for my specific field, which is education. So there are now studies that show that about 43% of college students are using ChatGPT in order to answer their homework and question assignments. Additionally, there could be also some socioeconomic problems since only few companies these days have the computational power to actually run these models. And so this would create even a larger aggregation of power in these few companies, while the other ones would be left behind because they just don't have the means in order to run these complex neural networks models. We should also not underestimate the impact on the environment of these models, and specifically in terms of the energy consumption that they would need in order to be trained, designed, and executed. For example, in order to train Google Palm, they were needed 3.4 gigawatts. And this is the same amount that 320 homes would consume over an entire year. So you can imagine also how this impact the emissions in order to power these models and as well also to fabricate and manufacture the hardware that is needed in order to execute these models. I would like now to focus on my specific view about the risks of generative AI. So I definitely agree with ACM that these risks are real. However, I'm not sure that policymaking and regulations are going to solve these potential risks. In fact, we, it's very challenging to move beyond the black box model, which is at the basis of many, many, many machine learning solutions and artificial intelligence solutions these days. Additionally, this black box approach is composed by smaller boxes. Each of one may have a different source. So, for example, some may be open source libraries, some other may be proprietary content, etc. So it's very hard to understand how these different pieces of software evolve over time and how they can be made accountable. Furthermore, while, for example, let's say the US may pass some policies, some other countries may just not care. And honestly, we are at the point in which a new world will begin and we have to deal with it. And these systems, unfortunately, will exist and we need to train ourselves and also our kids and our future generations to deal with these potential problems that are going to be created. Additionally, I do think that new research is necessary and it is a very good drive to promote new approaches that are explainable, that are open, that are transparent, etc. However, money is a big driver. As I said, the market uh, size for generative AI is already enormous, it's expanding at an extremely high speed. And so now telling this company to all of a sudden slow down and reduce their income just because we want to do more research may not be feasible. And maybe if they do not like to do it here because there are too many regulations, they can always move somewhere else and do it where regulations are more flexible in order to keep making money. Plus, this system could train maybe on a smaller scale by some groups that do not really care about the policies of anywhere in the world, and then they can use it maliciously. So it's not an easy problem to solve. Definitely research is the key in order to try to prevent these issues, but it's going to be very hard, in my opinion, to produce reliable results in time to prevent these models to be widely available around the world.